In this video, I'm going to talk about disease and transmission of disease. The next video will be about the worldwide importance of disease. We'll start off with definitions. Health is the state of social, mental and physical well-being, not just being free of disease. Disease is a departure from good health caused by malfunction in the mind or the body. So, what causes disease? A disease can be caused by a parasite. A parasite is something that lives either on the host or in the host. Parasites cause harm to their host by feeding on the nutrition. Next, we have a pathogen. Pathogens are purely organisms that cause disease. They do this by also feeding off nutrition of the host. Now, I'm going to list the organisms that cause disease and how they regularly do this. First of all, we have bacteria. These are single-celled organisms. They cause harm by releasing waste products and they're dangerous because they spread so rapidly. Next we have fungi. Fungi live on and in between the layers of the skin. They also cause disease. They cause irritation and soreness by sending out hyphae. This is how they reproduce. The hyphae then release spores. Next we have viruses. Viruses invade the cells. They use the cells genetic machinery to replicate. They then produce so many of themselves. They burst the cell open and many more viruses emerge. Next we have protozoa. Protozoa are a group of unicellular eukaryotic organisms. An example of a protozoa would be the plasmodium parasite in malaria. Protozoa enter the cells of the host and feed on the cell contents. I'm going to quickly go over them diseases again and give you an example. An example of a virus, HIV. An example of a bacterial infection, tuberculosis. An example of a disease caused by a protozoa, malaria. We're now going to talk about the diseases themselves and their transmissions. First up, HIV. Human Immunodeficiency Virus This virus enters the body and the cells it goes to are the T helper cells. In these cells it replicates itself, bursts out and destroys these cells in the process. This weakens the immune system greatly. This then makes you prone to opportunistic infections. These are infections that rely on the fact that you've got a weakened immune system and make it easier for them to get into the body. After 5-10 to 10 years of living with HIV and being HIV positive, you have the chance of developing AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Now, how does HIV transmit from one individual to another? HIV is only transmitted through bodily fluids. This includes, but is not limited to, unprotected sex, unscreened blood transfusions, blood-to-blood -blood contact such as sharing needles or needle stick incidents, using unsterilised equipment, or breastfeeding. This goes from mother to child. Now I'm going to talk about tuberculosis. This is a bacterial disease. This disease is caused by two pathogens, Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Mycobacterium bovis. TB is usually found in the lungs. How does one individual give another individual tuberculosis? It's done through the spread of the Mycobacterium tuberculosis. This is done by droplet infection. So here you have your person. This person is sneezing and coughing like crazy. When you sneeze and cough, you might not be able to see them but you release hundreds of thousands of droplets. In these droplets are the infective agents, Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Mycobacterium bovis. If you have individuals who are within the proximity of this person's droplets, soon enough they will inhale some of these droplets and they will catch tuberculosis. Albeit one droplet is not enough to give you tuberculosis, you do have to take quite a few in. But in crowded areas, that is not hard at all. As I mentioned crowded areas, I'm now going to talk about the factors it can increase the spread of tuberculosis. First of all, like I just said, overcrowding. If you're in an overcrowded area, you have loads of people coughing and sneezing all the time. Do you have much more chance of catching this disease? Poor ventilation means the droplets remain in the air for longer, so you'll be exposed to these bacteria for longer. Poor health. If you already have a weakened immune system, such as having a disease such as HIV, you are far more likely to catch tuberculosis. Homelessness. You'll be exposed to poor conditions with other individuals who may or may not have this disease. And the last part of this video, the spread of malaria. This chap here isn't very happy. He has malaria. The plasmodium gametes are in this guy's red blood cells. The plasmodium gametes are in this chap's red blood cells. The female Anopheles mosquito bites this guy and sucks his blood. So now, the gametes are inside this mosquito. And inside the mosquito, they start to fuse. And just quickly, in this scenario, the female Anopheles mosquito is acting as a vector. A vector is an organism that carries the disease and that can spread it, but the organism itself is unaffected by this disease. So, inside this mosquito, the zygotes you've got, they fuse and then migrate to the salivary gland 
in the mosquito. So this mosquito is really, really thirsty. It goes to bite another chap. But so the mosquito can bite this guy undetected. It injects a general anaesthetic from its salivary glands into the guy, so he, so he doesn't feel it. However, in the process of doing this, the plasmodium that is now fused inside this mosquito's salivary glands have just been injected into the guy. So now he is carrying this plasmodium. Once inside the dude, the plasmodium migrates to the liver. Around here, the plasmodium releases offspring. So now, in the blood cells, you have the plasmodium gametes. So here we are, back to square one. 